Recording in progress. Communicators are particularly proud to be associated with this. Event. It is one of the towering titans of our profession who is being honored. National Center of Science Communication is a group of people, the meeting of the minds of this contemporary science communicators. We have a wide spectrum of people. We have scientists, we have scientists communicators, particularly we have proud to be associated with the science journalists, we have science writers, writers, we have science poetry, and we have even poets who translate the science communication into a meeting of the minds of this contemporary That is the spectrum of science communication. We have a wide spectrum of people. We have a wide spectrum and analyze the scientists, particularly we are proud to be associated with your science. Our entire science poetry is professional. We have been taught by the National Center of Science Communication has gone into hyperbinary range. The entire electromagnetic spectrum has been brought into science. We are particularly proud to be associated with your science. Our entire science poetry is professional. We have been taught by the National Center of Science Communication. We have gone into hyperbinary range. And at this point, for the first time in the recorded human history, the spectrum of the sun is necessary for science. Colorly brown, we are seeing the light of science. Because as the light of 
1969 from Jadavpur University, Kolkata, and in 1971 he was selected for the prestigious Hindu Hitachi Scholarship and went to work in Japan in the field of industrial machinery. In 1978 he joined the Billa Industrial and Technological Museum (BITM) as we know today. During the next 10 years, Mr. Mukherjee produced numerous exhibits for new science centers in different parts of the country and abroad. Developed excellent traveling exhibitions on current topics of science and coordinated various science-related activities for students in the national level. He worked as a research scholar in the Smithsonian Institution for a brief period in 1996. Mr. Mukherjee, started the Central Research and Training Laboratory as the R&D hub and the HRD nursery of He took over as the Director General of National Council of Science Museums on September 1, 1997 and during early 1999 he organized the Second World Center Science Congress in Kolkata as its Secretary General. Under his leadership, a large network of science centers and museums has been developed in India. 
for his contribution to the field of science communication he has received the prestigious royal shafer experience leadership award from the association of science and technology centers astc usa in the year 2008 mr mukaji has served as a member of the international advisory board of the astc and the program committee of the science center world congress which is currently termed as science center world summit retired in the year 2019 he is currently in the consultancy services in the field of science centers and located in calcutta so, so mukherjee will talk about the growth of science center movements in india while mr ad choudhury the next speaker will talk more about the impacts now i would like to introduce you uh this uh, mr uh, dr choudhury mr dr choudhury is a mechanical engineer by profession and is a science museum and center professional he has been working in various science museums and centers under national council of science museum in india for the last three decades he is currently holding the charge of director general of the national council of science museum which is under ministry of culture government of india he has more than 34 years of work experience in developing and operation of science centers under ncsm comprising development of exhibits complete projects on turnkey basis and so on he joined the national council of science museum in the year 1987 and work in various capacities including as a director of science city kolkata during his long career in science education and communication he has contributed immensely to the development of a number of new science museums and centers and other museums in the country various exhibitions and activities and non formal science education programs for students teachers and general public of this country and abroad some of the recent museums developed under his tutelage are the virtual experiential museum at manmohal varanasi and the national museum of indian cinema in mumbai for the film division of ministry of information broadcasting and also he was the a pillar for launching a new set of 25 new mobile science exhibition buses for the aspirational districts of india he is a member of numerous state science and technology councils science communication organizations science museums and science center boards he coordinated and participated in a number of national and international conferences on a variety of science museum and science center uh, related topics he has participated in many workshops in india and abroad on science museum related themes he is also holding additional charge of the post of director indian museum kolkata with all i now request mr mukherjee please take over and please and deliver his address thank you ঠিক আছে আমি যখন বলবো তখন তুমি শিফট করে দেবে গুড মর্নিং টু অল অফ ইউ গুড মর্নিং টু অল অফ ইউ গুড মর্নিং Yes. Good morning, sir. Yesterday, we had... The NCSM is muted. Please unmute. We can't hear... Please switch off your mobile, your sound and videos. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. No, 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 no. Yes, yes. Yeah, now, sir. We can hear you. Can all of you hear me now? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. 
So yesterday, we listened to many of the stalwarts in the field, and we came to know about uh, activities of the Science Center, starting from the first day. <clears throat> and the people who were involved in those, the stalwarts in this field, they were involved in this activity, they talked about their own experiences. We are, I'm sure that we all became <laughs> enriched when we listened to their experiences. Now today, I'll be talking about a history of the growth of science museums and science centers in this country. And this is a story we started in the middle of the 50s. And therefore, it is almost after 65 or 66 years, almost two thirds of a century of similar kind of activities in the country. And this being a, a, a historical uh, presentation, I thought I should have a PowerPoint presentation because it's difficult to remember whatever happened in 65 or 66 years. But remember, um, I always thought that whatever, the, I mean, the, the, whichever way the Science Center movement grew in this country, that was because of teamwork. And so in my presentation, there is no mention of any particular name, Doyen or whatever, no particular name. No Mukherjee, no Dr. Chaudhary, nothing like that. And I think uh, uh, for the, the, the story of this uh, science center movement is not only about establishing a movement in this country, but also development of scientific manpower, empowerment of the society, and of course, fun. So I start my presentation now. Can I, can I have my presentation? Otan, otan, otan. Lal, opore, hai, this one. Yeah, to me, it's more dejao. Yes. Can you see these slides, all of you? Yeah, yes, sir, we can see. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we start with the constitution of India, you know, <clears throat> it was set in place in 1950. And in one part, you know, you know that it has mainly two parts, our rights, rights of the citizen and the responsibilities of citizen, Indian citizen. And there in one part, which is the 51A paragraph under H subheading, it's written that the responsibilities of citizens should include to develop the scientific temper, humanism, and the spirit of inquiry and reform. Imagine how intelligent our forefathers were, the people <clears throat> who made this constitution. In my knowledge, I do not know really whether any other country in the world has so specifically mentioned about scientific temper in their constitution and the spirit of inquiry and the spirit to reform. A wonderful beginning, I would say. A real inspiration, a real direction being given in our constitution. Nineteen fifty four fifty five. The first two museums that came upon Indian soil, science museums that came upon Indian soils. One in the Central Museum inside Bits Pilani campus, and you know that depicted different aspects of science and technology, including agriculture. Uh, and many others, metallurgy, mining, things like that. 
which were useful for the Bits Pilani students and for you know, the, the students of the schools that are around uh, the Pilani campus. And then a small display was inside the NPL, the National Physical Laboratory at New De Delhi. But then there was a focus. Of course, there were depiction of science and technology development, but the focus was, the idea was that someday we will depict here the science and technology development in post-independence India. That was thought to be the focus. Well, the idea was very different from what we do now. In 1959, the first organized science museum in the country started in Kolkata. That has a history and it's a written history. There are some articles, there are some booklets, there are some monograms. What happened at that time? Actually, in 1956, the then chief minister of West Bengal, he visited a visionary, I would say. Uh, uh, he visited Europe and visited the Deutsches Museum in Munich, came back and thought, why, why not something like that, that I saw in Deutsches Museum in Kolkata, why not? So he contacted uh, a big industrial house, the House of Billas, and told them, can you help in this? The builders readily agreed and in fact gave their residential house for the purpose of setting up this science museum. It's a, inside a sprawling campus in southern part of Kolkata in Baliganj. So it just started. Nobody knew what is to be done. <clears throat> Nobody knew that how the exhibit will be. But Everybody thought that this is just the beginning. The planning officer was in place, was appointed, and then he made his own team. And then they started working on this. Now, the, this, this, as you can see in my slide, that the idea there was basically following the Deutsches Museum Munich display and the Science Museum London display traditional display of science museums. Now the Builder Museum became very, very popular. I remember I was in school at that time when it opened. And whenever we had <coughs> a tour, organized tour to BITM, we all felt so excited. Oh, we'll go and see how things happen there. You know, you put your hand and without any switch, the water comes out of a faucet. You sit there, something happens, and the door opens. You, you just go approach a, a, a room, and the door opens. You sit down, the fan starts. Oh, how can they do it? Great ideas. You are really excited. And we used to come again and again and again. It really ignited our young minds. Then it, because it became so popular, there was a thought of setting up another one. And the place was Bengaluru, Bangalore. Because Bangalore at that time, from the middle of the 60s, it was growing to be a scientific hub of India. Not only in South India, but in India as a whole. So from the Visheshadaya Trust, again, we got a building. The building is still housing the VITM there. And the Visheshadaya Industrial and Technological Museum opened its gates to the public in 1965. Both BITM and VITM very soon became very popular, particularly to student groups. Now, <coughs> BITM and VITM were functioning under the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. You know, some Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, the leading scientific and industrial research organization in, the, in India. And the CSIR was governing and controlling BITM and VITM at that time. 
the idea in those days in BITM and VITM is that okay, we have two science museums, quite large science museums, opened in 1959 and 65 in Kolkata and Bangalore two cities of the country. But what about those millions who are outside, you know, the ambit of this and who are from the rural sector, who are in other towns, who, who are uh, residing in other big cities in India? So the idea was that for those who could not come to the science museums in cities, the messages of science were to be taken to them. And this is, was the beginning of outreach programs in BITN and VITN. You know, organized outreach programs. We have to go and meet people, take science to them. This is the time when the first science, mobile science exhibition, MAC, earlier the name was Mobile Science Museum, but it changed. It is now Mobile Science Exhibition. It started operating in 1965. The first one from BITM, and it traveled in and around, uh, in outskirts of uh, Kolkata, and then to the districts of West Bengal. And at the same time, with the team that the planning officer had, by that time he was the director of museums, BITM started science activity centers in several district towns in West Bengal and also later in South India. So in some districts, which were tribal areas, which were very poor, which were very poor, the message of science started being taken. And then in the early 70s, at Worley, Mumbai, commenced. Now, you, you will note that after a science museum, I have put a question mark, and I have also put the word Worley, the location of the museum. Now, the question mark is because this science museum was later uh, given the name of a science center. Because here, here in, in Mumbai, the transition from the museum activities to science center activities started. That is why, although I have written museum, but later it was uh, called the Nehru Science Center. I have written only, again, a fun, a fun story. Why only? That's a very high-end place now, high-end location in Mumbai. Very expensive. And how could we get 13 or 14 acres of land in Orly? Because it was the garbage dump of Mumbai. Because it was the garbage dump of Mumbai. And if you go there, you will find that how the place has been transformed. <laughs> and, and later on, although NCSM, after this formation, was known to many people as the people who can transform garbage dumps into very nice places. And this continues, I think. After Mumbai, we had one in Nagpur. We had uh, the Science City, Kolkata, set up on a very large garbage dump. And uh, if you go to Gangtok, up there in Sikkim, the chief secretary told me that I'll give you a very good piece of land. And that was their garbage dump. So we were known, NCSM very soon came to be known as people who can transform your garbage dump to science centers. But my request to all of you, don't tell this to the authorities so that once again, <laughs> garbage dumps will be dumped on us. So this was uh, the beginning there. Now the transition started taking place. In 1973, the Planning Commission of India set up a task force 
to determine how science could be popularized further through science museums in India. Because, you know, BITM and VITM became so very uh, attractive uh, destinations for students, particularly. It saw potential, great potential, I would say, of the science museums for popularization of science, creating awareness, creating a scientific temper, supplementing formal science education with non-formal mode and creating expertise in the field. When BITM or VITM started, we didn't have much of expertise in the field. We used to bring in models or drawings from a London Science Museum or from other museums. But this expertise needed to be created at that moment because everybody was thinking that this is time the science museums the science center movement should grow, should proliferate in different parts of the country. And very decidedly, depiction of post-independence tries in s &T, which were the, you know, the first thought to be the focus of science centers was put on backstage. The task force recommended, entered earlier, that science museums are to be developed in three levels the national level, big ones, regional level, and the district level, supported by mobile science exhibition units. The science museums in different parts to be set up need not be the same size, same architecture, you know, the same thing. It will not be a replica of what we made earlier. However, <clears throat> some standardization will be needed. And the content should have a basic core element supplemented by sections relevant to the local conditions. And to do this, for the planning of the network of science museum, there should be a separate executive agency with required specialization and expertise that would function under an user ministry of the government of India. Now, this is the first time we are talking about a separate executive agency with the required specialization and expertise. And NCSM is born. The government had decided that a new autonomous society under the title National Council of Science Museums or NCSM is to be formed, delinking it from the CSIR. So far, we were under CSIR. So NCSM society was registered in April 1978. Now, why this delinking? Because the science museums at that time, we are facing a priority crisis. Because, you know, CSIR works in scientific and industrial research. Their main activity is research on scientific and industrial activities, <coughs> innovations. And science communication was always put in the backstage. We are not getting priority in terms of funding, in terms of uh, growth. Frankly, it was thought that if the CSIR takes the responsibility of proliferating the science museum activities in the country, perhaps the growth would be thwarted, perhaps. So that's why a new autonomous society was formed. The NCSM Autonomous Society was to take the control and governance of BITM, VITM, and the one coming up at Mumbai. <coughs> NCSM would also develop new science museums, but then the entire arrangement will be for two years under an experimental uh, status. That means after two years, it would be reviewed whether the science centers under NCSM are doing well or it would be necessary to bring them back to CSI. Now, transformation from artifact and model based museum functions to activity based science communication functions initiated at that time. And instead of Science Museum London or Deutsches Museum, we look to Exploratorium in San Francisco, USA, <coughs> for getting the necessary expertise, necessary help, 
because we all knew that very soon we would be making participatory and interactive exhibits, which are not really cut section models or, or dioramas or uh, you know charts or passive exhibits. No. So this was a picture in 1977. You can see Kolkata, Mumbai was being formed. 1993, in six years, it grew. And what we did is we made some teams who worked for setting up these regional science centers and the sub-regional science centers in different parts of the country. And they used to go there, you know, used to select the plot of land, um, uh, produce the architectural design of the building. This way it had, and then finally set up the science center. 2007, this is the picture. 2014, the blinking lights are the science center that was being produced at that time, created at that time. But you can see the total number has already come to almost 50, 48. So then the question was already there that how big NCSM would be? Would it be a hundred center uh, set up or what? Now look at this. Today, NCSM has created science museums and science centers in all those places. You can see the <coughs> marks there. But then the present DG told me that, wait, 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 this is not all. This is not all. This is where we are now. We are making 46 to 62. These are all being made now. These, these science centers are all being developed right at this moment. So, the setup or the infrastructure developed, grew in a very fast pace from nine, early 70s or maybe from 77 to 2021. <clears throat> infrastructure. Some standardization was required because what we thought at that time that at a very in a very short period of time we had to develop new science centers and a huge number of exhibits for them. You cannot just open the building and with nothing inside it. So at the same time, you have to develop hundreds of maybe thousands of exhibits in a short span of time. So some standardization was needed. Now the large science centers, science cities, 25 acres minimum we need. We started with 50 or 60 acres, but the states said, sorry, we cannot give you that big plot. And so we limited ourselves to 25 acres now, I think. The size could be 14,000 to 20,000 square feet. The one in Delhi or Mumbai, they are 18,000 square meters. Capital cost, we started with 60 crore for the science city. It's now 191 crore. Of course, there is a component of a corpus fund. And this fund is to be shared equally between central and state government. Then we come to regional level category one, which is basically a regional science center, seven to eight acre plot, maybe a little more, 4,000 square meter built up area, 30 crore is what we need to set up this science center at present. And the sub-regional uh, categories two and three, five acres plot, 2,000 square meter, we started with 1,124 square meter, now it is set at, standardized at 2,000 square meter, or 450 square meter, a really small one, and so far, NCSM has not built a single category three science center uh, on Indian soil. But this is in concept. And capital cost is 15 uh, crore, 15.2 crore. 
This is the, these are the standards we made. There was some standardization made in, in, in the building designs, in what are the things we need there in a science center. You need a, an exhibition area, you need the gallery space, you need uh, you know, some demonstration space, you need an auditorium. So all those things were standardized. These are the landmarks. 79, the first outdoor science park was opened in Nehru Science Center, Mumbai. The concept, as we have learned uh, yesterday also, and I have seen this, the, this concept has been emulated in science centers developed in the USA or other countries. Now, this activity, you know, taking science to the people outside the four walls, that caught the imagination of that, that, that really attracted people. And it became so very successful conceptually and from the exhibit because, you know, people learn while playing. And, and, and this has become an essential feature of all science and nuts that are being created by NCSM in India now. 1980s, we changed the transition from the artifact or uh, you know, the passive uh, exhibit-based museum functions to the science centers, to, to, to uh, you know, the activity-oriented science centers. And this is also the time when science centers outside the umbrella of MCSM land. You know, they started, the, what is happening here? This is being planned. 1985, a very large international exhibition, 14,000 square meters. We built it ourselves. We sent it to USA. And because we created a successful exhibition, traveling exhibition, we learned a lot from that. This was a quantum leap in experience. Frankly speaking, I was involved in this project, but I know that we learned how to use the concept, how to build up a concept, <clears throat> how to concept, which, is, which, is, which goes well with the exhibition, then how to build the exhibits, because you know, the architecture, exhibit architecture had to be such that, that that can be easily dismantled and again set up. We learned about packing, we learned about, uh, uh, about how the artifact, the invaluable artifacts can be kept in proper order. We also learned about the logistics. You know, a huge leap of expertise was there. And uh, after that, uh, we thought that we can do it anywhere. The same exhibition, same kind of exhibition was taken to Bangladesh, to the Caribbean, to China, to Bulgaria, to France, to many other countries. Yes. The Central Research and Training Laboratory work, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the basically uh, relating to the, or catering to the need for training of personnel who are working in uh, NCSM and also for research and development of new ideas. The National Science Center at Delhi was opened in 1992. Another very big science center, about, as I said, 18,000 square meter built up area. This was, you know, what it did in 1997, the first science city inaugurated, inaugurated in Kolkata. 1999, the focus was on Northeastern states and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. See, at this time, we were thinking that how big NCSM would grow. And there was a, there was a discussion, that there was a decision taken. And from then on, from the 2000 or from the, from the new millennium, that the science centers and science museums and CSM makes will be given to the state, respective state governments for operation. But before that, we will give them all help. This is also the time, you know, I'm talking about Kurukshetra Panorama Design launched. 
because you know this Purukshetra Palarama was a very, uh, I would say, a, an unconventional mythological approach in which we put that epic, the, 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 the epic, our known epic in our Mahabharata, as a part of a science center and as to make a link of our heritage in science and technology with the story. What for the science center the Mauritius started, this is the first foray into other countries. The second science center world congress was also held at Kolkata. This is the largest international science center conference or congress so far held in India, so in this part of the world. 2002, science center activities given a regenerative push, NCSM developed new science centers and handed them over to the other state governments. They of course all help. And the Rajiv Gandhi Science Center at Mauritius was opened. 2009, here in Kolkata, the building adjacent to the headquarters of NCSM, the Creative Museum Designer, CMD, was formed. A subsidiary company under the NCSM was formed because, you know, we were having at that time a huge number of queries and demand from other places to set up new science centers, maybe industrial centers. And uh, the NCSM, which is busy in creating their own network and also looking after the science museums and science centers, they have already taken under their fold. It was very difficult for NCSM to, again, cater to a large number of proposals or demands coming from other places. So the CMD was formed, particularly to function as a company and particularly to cater to those new demands. Now, this is the philosophy <coughs> of the exhibits we took up, the evolution of exhibits. Now, when I say evolution of exhibits or evolution of activities, programs, remember that all of them are for empowerment of the society. And we thought that for the public, the empowerment will be by awareness or information, engage them, empower. For the students, youth and students, you supplement their formal education, engage them in the activities, empower. The basic philosophy, it has a two-pronged approach. Once again, two-pronged approach like this, awareness in a broad, but may not be of that depth. Because you know, if you build a pyramid, the base, the, the bigger the base is, the uh, the higher you can, the high, the more height you can achieve. So this is what we thought. And the education side, for the students particularly, maybe the base was not that big. Only the students and youth, but the, it was deep education. You know, taking them, supplementing their formal education with the non-formal mode, and together we created. We thought of creating. We propose to create the scientific culture in this country. Oh, these you know that are uh, original labja, so many different types of exhibits are there. In the science museum field, particularly original objects, replicas, visuals, charts, supplementary scale models, layout models, working models. But when we moved into the Science center kind of activities, interactive exhibits, the immersive exhibits, virtual reality experiences, non traditional immersive exhibits, passive exhibits, charts, visuals, artifacts, working exhibits, you know, visitor operated, active. This came up in the uh, mainly, it started in a Deutsche Museum, these, uh, you know, uh, active exhibits, and then it uh, it was taken to some other uh, science and science museums at that time. Interactive exhibits, mainly mainly uh, developed by the idea, the concept developed by 
explorer trade him. They are hands-on. The visitor has options to try out. They are given many options. Learns the process of discovery. <laughs> Important for the science boom center. Learning through a process, teaching through a process of discovery. Immersive exhibits. You know, sometimes we like to put you in a particular frame of reference and teach you the science that is happening in that frame. I mean, if I, if I want to talk about a rotation, I would rather take you uh, in a rotary frame and then explain with the help of exhibits, help of activities, what happens in rotation. An example. <clears throat> well, what I wanted to show, unfortunately, this video is not working now. What I wanted to show, <clears throat> this guy at the right hand side, he is throwing a ball. You look at his hand, right hand, he is holding a ball. And throwing it to another one who is standing directly opposite, diametrically opposite to him. Now, when the whole frame rotates, actually the whole frame with the visitors is rotating. And when he throws the ball, then instead of going to the straight, diametrically opposite, it moves. Fun. But at the same time, you aha, this is what is happening inside a rotation frame. So, you know, then in the school or in the colleges, they learn about the, how the resultant you know, motion the ball gets from the rotation, the tangential motion due to rotation and also the throwing motion. <coughs> I am quoting from the editorials of Nature. Learning in a science center exhibit hall or science park is mostly self-guided. This is to be encouraged. Importantly, this kind of learning is also pervasive, cumulative, and often much more effective at getting people excited about science. And an individual's realization that he or she can work things out unaided promotes a profoundly motivating sense of empowerment. Actually, the moment I, I discover a principle that involves whatever we see outside us, a physical principle, then I know that this knowledge applies to this, applies to this, I'm empowered. This is again the transformation. The passive exhibits <coughs> goes to active exhibits. There's a two-way communication with multiple options given. In the process of discovery, and it becomes interactive. You learn, you do, and you understand. In the assimilation of women, this is the discovery process. We assimilate information from the exhibit. Understanding the problem, what is happening there? You form your own hypothesis. You test the hypothesis, the machine, the, the exhibit says, no, you are not correct. So I go back again and do my own hypothesis. We form my hypothesis again. Ultimately, I succeed. And I discover the principle that is involved in that particular exhibit. So this is the process of discovery. And as I say, I do, I understand. That philosophy is built in interactive exhibits. Evolving programs. Science demonstration lectures, science show, school loan service. This is no more working now. <laughs> Teachers training programs, school science centers. Again, a question mark 
because school science centers are a failure, I would say. It's not working. Not because they are made in a bad way, but because we fail to get mentors in the school. The people, the mad people, who really wanted to take the school science centers working with their students. There was a lack of mentorship. There's a lack of, I would say, inspiration or inspired teachers in some cases. Science seminar, nationwide program, science drama, nationwide program, creative hobby centers, camps, open laboratory, and now innovation hubs. Science film show, sky observation, planetarium, fixed and inflatable. This is again another story. We started with inflatable planetarium, brought some uh, inflatable planetarium from the US, learning technologies with a license to produce them in India. And now NCSM is producing fixed stone uh, planetariums, eight meter and 12 meter, and they are in demand. <clears throat> then science fair, science and technology fair, again, national program, science camps, popular lectures, interaction with working scientists, excursions and nature trails, programs for mothers, senior citizens and special groups, programs for blind and hearing impaired, impaired persons, several exhibitions. I saw one in BIT very recently for blinds. Wonderful, wonderful. You know, all the write-ups in Braille and all that. Mostly through sound you learn. International meets, volunteer programs. Evolving programs. Now, this again has a different kind of philosophy. At present, our country is facing a serious problem in the form of a sharp decline in the number of talented students coming into science careers. You know that. This is a problem worldwide. And if we are afraid that in near future, there'll be a quality crunch and a quality decline in, in our scientific manpower, scientific research and science teaching. Why? Why it is happening like that? Because, you know, the, our, the talent is going to engineering, uh, medical colleges, and after that, maybe in the management studies, because they get good jobs. There's a strong market force catching those people instead of allowing them to go into, you know, science research. This is one reason. The other reason is our formal science teaching is mostly devoid of experimentation and demonstration, which are essential in learning science. And it has become a chalk talk root affair. So here comes the science center. He said, okay, those gaps we will fill up. You can do any kind of experimentation and demonstration in our centers. Come here, do this, and get supplemented. You know, the supplementing the uh, formal education, which has gaps with the non-formal board, which fills up those gaps. For the rural folks, socially inclusive activities, health and nutrition, energy, water, disaster management, you take through MSC, mobile science exhibitions, or some other means, lab to land, interactive sessions. Uh, yesterday, Mr. Bhakti talked about a program in Urulia, demonstrations for eradicating superstitions, wonderful shows are there by NGOs and uh, science communicators who do this the wonderful shows, they advocate superstitions in the rural areas. School science centers, I told you, this experiment uh, was not a very successful experiment. Science clubs, amateur astronomy clubs, many, many are there now in the country. Science shows, of course. Awareness of SNT issues make people empowered to enjoy and sustain benefits derived from science and technological progress. Mass awareness, even bereft of deep scientific understanding, 
helps immensely in the process of creation of a logical mindset. You know, we, we take these ideas into building our programs and our exhibits. Now, see, for example, whether a, it's good to have a mobile, uh, mobile phone all the time with me, whether it is healthy or not, there's a big confusion here, a big debate going on. But unless the people do not, unless the people know that what are the things, scientific things involved, what are the radiations that we receive, they cannot speak about it, they cannot debate on this. So awareness of the people is very, very important to create a logical mindset in them. Well, yes, empowered citizens are valuable assets in handling you know, the problems that we have, national problems, health issues, disaster mitigation, environment protection. Similarly, socially relevant issues, the most important issues now in front of our country. Human resources, again, I talked about exhibits, I talked about the programs, and now what happened in the human resources field? We consolidated teamwork in this uh, 65 years because, you know, we, we never expected that all the science centers will have the same kind of expertise and skill. Now, some are good in fiberglass work, some are good in uh, fitting and uh, carpentry work, some are very good in conceptualization, some are very good in creating new um, digital platforms or, or softwares. So we try to consolidate the teamwork from out of the huge network that has already been put in place. So enhance all round quality through training and research. That's why the Central Research and Training Laboratory was formed. Reward. Now in NCSM, uh, the scientific and technical groups, they get equal benefit, benefits and their promotion rules, they are equivalent to the <coughs> scientific world. So that kind of reward for good people, there is a scheme for quick promotions, you know, the institute, whether you have a post in the higher uh, rank or not, you are assessed after a particular number of years of service, if you are found good, you go to the scale. These are the rewards built in and establish a profession. <clears throat> the last one, you know, in academic course we started in 2005, it's a two year, four semester course leading to MS degree. So a profession, the science museum, science center professionals are there. It's a profession to be set up in the country. Meeting the demand. Huge demand now. We market expertise, we export exhibits. Even now, continuously, we export exhibits. The creative museum designs, I have already talked about it. The NCSTC and Vigyan Prasar are doing commendable job. You know, the National Council of Science and Technology Communication, <clears throat> organizing programs in different parts of the country, funding them. Vigyan Prasar using the media to communicate science. Science centers and planetaria created outside the umbrella of NCSM in Tamil Nadu, Tripura, Kerala, Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh, Punjab, Gujarat. They are, you know, the vibrating uh, science centers and networks that are catering to the, dem uh, the demand from the, the respective zones, doing their science communication in their own zones. Science communicators, we have our collaborators now here. Science clubs, other NGOs take the message of science to the people at large. And this activity in recent years has grown in a wide scale and NCSM is always cooperating or collaborating with their activities. They can take any kind of help they need from the NCSM. The science technology and innovation policy of the government supports science communication activities. <coughs> Now, previously it was science and technology policy. Now it is science, technology and innovation policy. I'll take maybe five minutes more. And I read out from the science and technology policy 2013. It said there's a growing need to enhance public awareness 
of the importance of science and technology in everyday life and the directions where science and technology is taking us. And it says that special support will be provided for programs that seek to popularize and promote science and technology in all parts of the country. Programs will also be developed to promote learning and dissemination of science through the various national languages, to enable effective science communication at all levels. In general, activities of science museums and science centers have been identified as an area for promoting public awareness of science and technology, and the government of India has given a special trust in this area. Support for wide dissemination of scientific knowledge <clears throat> will be given through the support of science museums, science centers, planetaria, botanical gardens, and the like. Challenges ahead. Big challenges remaining relevant. We have to always <clears throat> bring to the people information about the cutting edge technology. The scientific or technological issues which are relevant now. You know that environmental issue is very relevant. Disaster mitigation issue is very relevant. You know, these are, you have to remain relevant. So continuously the science centers and science museums have to put up shows or take the messages of uh, these exhibits to the people. You know, people must come to science center to see cutting edge technology issues, to understand cutting edge technology issues, and also to get acquainted with the uh, socially important or socially uh, uh, valuable issues. That those are connected to science and technology. One thing we have missed in the process, this is a tragedy, the next slide, collection policy and collection management. Now, <clears throat> while the transformation took place, transition took place from science museum to science centers in NCSM, unfortunately, the collection management, the collection, the activities related to collection, setting up a collection policy or management of the collection, this is now not at all working, it's dormant. Evaluation, you have to do evaluation all the time. Periodic assessment of the impact, which Mr. Dr. Chaudhary will talk about now. Individual impact, societal impact, economic impact, political impact also. These have become important. But remember, superstition and obscurantism still persist in our country. Eradicate them by creating a culture of science. Our Prime Minister said in one of it, in while inaugurating the Indian Science Congress a few years back, spread scientific temper into our lives as part of innovation, defined as newness in thinking and action. In other words, do whatever we are doing, individually or collectively, in more efficient, more satisfying ways. This Mr. Bajpayee is saying in while inaugurating one of our Indian Science Congresses. Looking ahead, it's a social empowerment to science centers. Governments of the economically developing world must take note of their values, science center activity values, and promote them as important tools in the national development process by the creation of a scientific culture. There's a great opportunity in front of economically developing nations to transform. And it is time to take the challenge of engagement engaging and empowered society in the process of national development. And this empowerment can be done in a large way by science centers and science museums. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your illuminating talk. We, you, uh, you covered it with a wide spectrum and all. So now I will request the Director General of NCSM, Mr. Edi Dr. Chaudhuri, to, to speak about on the impacts and all in sync with what Sir has just told. Thank you. Thank you. We have heard a wonderful lecture from 
Mr. I.K. Mukherjee, the former Director General of NCSF. Very enlightening, and I think my younger colleagues in the Council, uh, you have picked up a lot of new information from this lecture, and it will uh, help you in understanding the philosophies. Uh, That's a long presentation. Yes. <laughs> Across the time, council. I will give you a brief. Uh, I know we are running short of time, so I will move very fast. I request can the presentation be carried? Can the put the PowerPoint first? So Mukherjee has spoken a lot about the evolution of exhibits and the main purpose is basically to communicate science, as he said also to empower our visitors. So here what I'll be doing is, like we have been over the years developing exhibits, developing science centers across the country with this in mind that we are in the long run going to fulfill the mandates that has been bestowed on NCSF. Now, to really check whether what we are doing, whether we are doing and what we are doing, is it right or whether we need to change some course, we need to modify our activities, whether we need to amend the ways we have been growing. So the impact of science centers was imperative. And here I would like to say, there's absolutely no doubt that science and technology play an important role in driving economic and social development in the country. India is a vast and diverse country with a strong affinity for science and technology. The rate at which the technologies are created and science is progressing are unmatched in human history. Every day we come across new information, we are getting new knowledge. However, the rate of knowledge diffusion from research centers and labs to the general public has always been slow. This we always, you know, we always look at the science, scientists working in labs, wonder what they are doing. Sometimes as a common man, you'd like to know what activities they're involved in and how it is beneficial to all of us. So I think science centers and science museum play this imp very important intermediary role of knowledge diffuser, as a knowledge diffuser in the society by providing experiential non-formal education to students, communities and the general public. Besides this, an impact assessment study was initiated. NCSM initiated this two years back and uh, I would say around three, three and a half years back. And Frost and Sullivan was assigned to carry out a study to identify the impact of the communication strategy of science museum centers on the general populace and the gaps in the present system. So what was the three issues that we have brought to them. One was to assess the impact of science museum and centers against the set objectives of NCSM in terms of the four broad impact factors, mainly personal, social, economic, and political, and if any other, to understand the expectation of individuals from science centers vis-a-vis -vis actual outcome of science museum centers under NCSM. And third was to suggest, suggest strategies to position NCSM as a leading organization for science communication in the country in the next five years. Now to undertake this study, uh, 15,865 stakeholders were involved in this study and it comprised focus group discussion among the stakeholders in five cities, Delhi, Kolkata, Mumbai, Bangalore and Guwahati. Interviews across the 22 science centers across India using face to face interview methodology and validation session at four centers. Stakeholders interview across 22 centers, including interviews with politicians and government stakeholders. And what has, I'll, I'll very briefly I'll tell you about what was the outcome of this study. As far as the personal impact is concerned, the study showcased that not only science centers impart knowledge to the visitors, they also generate interest in science and technology among the visitors. 
the visitors also believe that after their visit, they are able to reason more rationally and are able to change their unscientific attitudes. 78% of the respondents mentioned that programs that they attended during their visit were beneficial to them. About two-thirds of the visitors claimed that they gained an interest in science and technology after their visit. Students find attending museums to be helpful in higher studies and help them understand the fundamentals better. It also made them more inquisitive, while teachers also felt a visit also helps them to do their job better. I think Mr. Mukherjee, while explaining, he was also talking about the rotating platform, how you know such experiences can fundamentally help us to understand the basic concepts. 65% of the visitors also mentioned that they were not able to relate the science experiments exhibits to their routine life. So it is important for science centers to establish that link between science exhibits and how they are connected to their day-to-day -day life. I think this is something very important that we need to activities which will be directly relevant to them, to our visitors or to everybody's day-to-day -day activities. 28% of the respondents mentioned that the visit has helped rationalize their thinking, while 20% believed that it had helped to reduce their superstitions. So these were some of the personal impacts the study gave us. In terms of social impact, 58% of the respondents agreed that science centers had positively impacted the community measure activities and also felt that science centers could create an impact on developing community partnership programs such as social and cultural programs. 86% of visitors believe science museums and centers have created an impact on the formal education system in a very positive way such as by providing practical understanding of the subjects and topics in a better way and by making the students more inquisitive. Stakeholders believe that science centers positively impact formal education. I think Mr. Mukherjee has also emphasized a lot where our role is in, in, in terms of supplementing formal education. 60% of the respondents agreed that science centers have created or could create youth employment by providing knowledge, encouraging developing new technologies, and by increasing job opportunities. The ability to conduct experiments in a controlled setting was quoted as one of the most significant learning from a visit to science centers by stakeholders who visited science centers as students. I think this is very important as far as our activities are concerned. We also looked at from the economic impact. 47% of the tourists came to the city to either visit the science center or had science center on the must visit list during their travel. While 29% believed that science center had improved the branding of the city. This indicates the importance of science centers to the local tourism industry. Yeah, we have witnessed to this in Science City, Kolkata, where we find a large number of Visitors comprise students from different parts of the country and abroad. Out of the total spending on the local economy due to science centers, I would say only 5% of this is spending on ent entrance fees. The remaining 90% of the spending is on local vendors in and around the centers, such as food stalls, local transport providers, accommodation, etc. So there are, it's not only the science center is generating revenue for itself, it is also the people associated with various activities leading to people coming here is also being, being benefited. The land parcel given was an ignored piece of land which has now become converted into a high profile, most desired place. High profile accommodation, schools and universities, hotels, eateries, bus stops have developed around this center. Yes, Mr. Mukherjee has also said that most of the times, uh, in several cases, we have been given land which are basically garbage grounds. So while converting this into science centers, it has not only uh, like made a significant change in the local environment, it has also changed the value of the land. Our experience in Science City, Kolkata is the land cost now in and around Science City has increased maybe 
30, 40 times than what it was initially before the science city came up. So there has been a significant change in the, I would say from the economic point of view of this areas. Political impact is, it says that 10% of the stakeholders agreed that science centers create political impact. 5% of the visitors agreed that science centers could increase the influence of science in policy making, political discourse. Discussion with the politicians highlighted the indirect role played by science centers in political discourse through reducing superstitions, imparting new learning, and making people scientific thinkers. Now, I would also like to share here our experience in NCSM is that there is a huge demand for new science centers across the country and being initiated by, which are being initiated by the local politicians across the country. It is further established by the fact that a number of questions are raised in both houses of the parliament on science centers. So every time there is a parliament session, we are witness to the large number of questions being asked by our honorable members of parliament. Good Not, question. Yes. Good yes. questions. They are very keen to know about each. For example, somebody from Maharashtra would like to know whether government has plans to come up, come up with additional science centers in Maharashtra. So similarly, the other states also we find similar <coughs> being raised. So this indirectly also gives a significant uh, indication, you know, that there is a lot of interest even by our political class to consider having science centers in their constituencies, probably it's a, it gives a value addition to the constituent, the people of the, of that region. Now, apart from, this is the, what I have already said is about the impact. So next is, you know, they have also, as part of this study, also suggested some thrust areas for improvement. Now, I'll just uh, say a few of them in order to reach general population to provide latest scientific knowledge, restructuring of the communication strategy is necessary. So we need to reorient our activities, restructure our activities, so that latest scientific knowledge can be provided to our general population. Science centers need to reach out to other demographics to enhance the popularization of science across India. Yes, most of our science centers are known uh, to have a large footfall of school going children. But we need to do activities so that other demographics also come to our science centers. Uh, science city is an exception where. Yeah, uh, it is also a need to be loyalty amongst the visitors, ensure that they are updated with the new areas of scientific research across. Can I, can I request everybody to kindly mute? Overall awareness levels of science centers need to be increased. This will increase, this will help to popularize science in India. Programs need to cover the entertainment quotient and the educational aspects of science. This may be free experiments, treasure hunts, and any experiential learning games, etc. There is a high potential for visitors who can become advocates of science centers to attract different age groups and people different, uh, sorry, to attract different age groups and people, different attractions and activities are needed. Well, by the findings, you know, we also tried to initiate some activities. As it said, one of the findings was there is a need to create loyalty amongst the visitors to ensure that they are updated with the new areas of scientific research across India. So keeping that in mind, we collaborated with the Department of Atomic Energy and Department of Science and Technology and came up with an exhibition called Vigran Samagam pushing the frontiers of science and technology. So this exhibition was held, started with Nehru Science Center, Mumbai. Then we went uh, to Visheshara Industrial and Technological Museum, Bangalore. We then had the exhibition at Science City, Kolkata, and it ended at National Science Center, Delhi. 
similar this there was another recommendation that science centers need to reach out to other demographics to enhance the popularization of science across india so keeping this in mind we tied up with the science museum group london which was supported by icmr and funded by the welcome trust we came up with an exhibition called superbugs the end of antibiotics this also traveled to the four metros and it was very very successful we got a large number of visitors lot of interactive se sessions were held uh, both in terms uh, with the visitors both for the superbugs as well as the vikan samagam and in the process we managed to reach out to a different demographic of our visitors similarly we launched 25 new mobile science exhibition buses for the aspirational districts so this was also i would say as part of the inclusive policy of the government we have created 25 new buses which are going to such districts which are the government has identified which needs to be uh, i would say supported by all ministries for development and bringing them at par with the other districts so 25 mobile science buses were introduced in september 2019 and the theme for this pair on food and health sanitation hygiene etc i would say the covid pandemic also created an opportunity for us one of the recommendation was in order to reach general population to provide state scientific knowledge restructuring of the communication strategies necessary this covid pandemic gave us an opportunity to utilize the digital platforms all our science centers across the council and not only under ncs and even other science centers being operated by the state governments in different parts of the country everybody has moved to the digital platform and we have been having we are continuously having series of lectures activities involving people from all across the country the best part is uh, while our science centers were confined to the local populous and to the touring uh, visitors and to some extent through our mobile science buses the online activities are able to reach out not only to all nooks and corners of the country we are also reaching abroad and many times my colleagues from different science centers keep reporting to us about participation of students and general people from <coughs> countries outside india so this is very encouraging and i think this is a a new way which we have introduced which i think this covid pandemic has made us to introduce and probably this will continue at all times to come in with this i'd like to end i have already eaten away most of the time which was earmarked for a tea break so with this i would like to end and probably we'll have a short tea break before we all again rejoin for the next session yeah, yeah. thank you sir. thank you mr choudhury for your insightful you know talk actually it is a perfect show of uh, guru shishya parampara because uh, uh, mukherjee sir has sp uh, spoken about the movement and you talked about the impact especially impact of the recent exhibitions and all these things thanks you once again yes we are running short so umesh should please take it over and then proceed further thank you as uh, it has been told it in fact it's time for a tea break uh, since we are behind the schedule for about almost by 18 minutes so i think we should be able to curtail this and start um, by 11:30 we at its scheduled time maybe i will request the control room uh, they can start uh, people uh, or panelists distinguished panelists uh, hope will start maybe not more